Success cannot be taught. You can only teach somebody a certain process of doing things. If you have your dreams clear, your, your support system will always support you. Every business can find a sweet spot around, you know, a solid purpose. If you're solving a problem and solving a purpose, there is always a trade-up. Namaskaram and welcome to uh, HI Insight 2018. This is the seventh edition of Insight. Well, every human being, no matter who they are, in their own level of intelligence, exposure and time in which they exist, are always aspiring to be something more than who they are. To explore that in some sense is insight. This is the nature of a human being. If you pay enough attention, there is no door in the universe that will not open for this creature. It is just a question of how intense this attention is. Sadhguru, you always said that leadership is all about integrity, inspiration and insight. Uh, if you can actually talk about that. Integrity is not a bunch of values or ethics or certain actions that we take and do not take. Integrity is your commitment is larger than yourself you are committed to a larger well-being. So you will do whatever is needed, that is towards the well-being of everybody around you. Inspiration means, if people are not inspired, if people are dragging their feet, oh then you had it. If you have to be an inspiration among ten people or hundred people or thousand people, the important thing is you're burning with intensity. Insight means, See, once you acquire a leadership position, you must work to sharpen your vision so that if you're sitting up there, when people look up to you, everything that you see is of a little more insight than what they see. So these three are most basic ingredients – integrity, inspiration and insight. Without this, there's no leadership. Leadership is not a position that you take. Leadership is an impression that you've made on other people. First thing is that uh, uh, it's very important uh, to think big and think large, never think small. In 1998, they posted me as uh, Secretary of Tourism because that time nobody had heard of Kerala as a tourism destination. I started building Kerala as a tourism destination, but I said I'll do everything which is an antithesis of the West. And we decided to go to the roots of Kerala. So, we brought back traditional Kerala Ayurveda, not as a massage, but as a regimen. We brought back the traditional houseboat of Kerala, where not a single nail is used. We brought back the backwaters of Kerala as a product. We brought back the cuisine of Kerala. We brought, it, brought back the traditional Kerala art forms and the traditional Kerala architecture. The Nile Kittam houses actually were being sold as firewood. Uh, we brought them back as the centerpiece of uh, the tourism product and we converted many poachers into guides in the Periyar Game Sanctuary. If you can think big and large and you can uh, change the status quo and Kerala became a very high value tourism. Just to give a little bit of background about uh, myself, I, uh, I went to IIT in 2004 uh, for computer science engineering. Finished my engineering, I got a job in Microsoft. Even though I was a good good uh, programmer and a good software engineer, but my heart was never in that uh, job. So, one day I decided that I should start the business. To both my parents' credit, they didn't uh, stop me from doing it. They said, don't do it, MBA, you know, they, they said all that, but they said, okay, if you want to take a risk, you take a risk. It is your life and your risk. 
if you have your dreams clear, your, your support system will always support you. As a first generation entrepreneur, you know, your vision keeps evolving as you learn more. Because when we started off, uh, our vision was not what it is today. Our vision was simply that we will build a website for booking cars. And from there to now, where our mission now is to build mobility for a billion people. All kinds of mobility options, all kinds of multimodal options for every spectrum of uh, society. So the dream evolves as an entrepreneur. You have to always keep your mind open to the market realities, always keep uh, hearing from the consumer. And the consumer always speaks the truth. You have to just uh, be able to read it. Right? Uh, so it keeps evolving. And then the most important thing is to ignite that uh, inspiration in, uh, in your team. Uh, Kishore, I've known you for many, many years. And if I look back from 2001 to 2018, uh, what you have created in India as business has been visionary. How do you build a vision? How do you build a strategy? How do you strategize your vision? So I think everybody is a learner and everybody is a teacher in some sense. And every step you take teaches you something more. I think we keep our eyes and ears open and meet people like you during our journey and maybe learn and execute something. And if it fails, try and learn something from that and again execute something. Yeah, but you have learned from others, you have created something. But during the journey, you also faced so many challenges. When I was facing my first big challenge in life, I started reading mystic musings of Sadhguruji and that was the only thing which helped me. There was an answer for every issues or challenges or problems or anything in the world. Nothing is permanent. Nor your success, nor your failure, or nor the challenges. Success is where what you create and millions enjoy. And that's what real success for me is. Success cannot be taught. You can only teach somebody a certain process of doing things. Depending upon their intensity, intelligence, involvement and of course the benevolence of time. Whatever we do is subject to the times in which we exist, we should never forget that. So considering all these things when they fall together, success is a consequence. Nobody should… nobody can work on a consequence. You can only work on a process. The only thing that I've inculcated with everybody here is to be absolutely devoted to the process. Now, uh, process is a daily ongoing thing. Success is only in other people's eyes. <laughs> they think you're successful, they think you're a failure. But uh, essentially what you're doing is doing the process right. What you have to do today, you're doing it right. So there is a systemic uh, stability to what we do. And of course you need a spark of genius. So uh, this is something that everybody should look at. There is a systemic stability. System is like an insurance that you can fall upon always. It would be expecting too much and it, is, it costs too much to be con continuously sparking with genius. But if there is no spark of genius, system will do mediocre things continuously. If there is too much genius and no system, then you will do spectacular things here and there but nothing endures. So this is a, a balance which one has to find. I worked with McKinsey uh, for about eight years. Um, every year I was thinking I would want to quit to start out. So I thought if India has to become that superpower in the next 10 years, 20 years, then the backbone of this country, which I thought was logistics, where the materials move, will have to be made stronger. And I started to go deeper into the trucking economy and the trucking sector now. People are saying, we have all the load demand, I don't have the truck driver. Who would want to grow up to have such a poor life, to, have a, to become a social outcast? The economy's progress, uh, India's progress and the global progress depend on, depends on this problem. How can we make the life human? The problem statement was, if you're spending months away from home, can we bring him home the same day? And started experimenting or ideating around a relay trucking model. In a relay trucking model, what happens is, the truck is passed on like a relay baton from a driver to driver, and a driver gets rostered to trucks in a way that every driver comes back home and the trucks keep running all the time. Customers wanted to partner with us because our transit time was very good, uh, cost was lower, 
and the drivers wanted to come on the platform because they were getting a much better life. So we found this sweet, sweet spot and I started to believe that every business can find a sweet spot around you know, a solid purpose. If you're solving a problem and solving a purpose, there is always a trade-up. There's a long journey to go. We have now uh, 3,000 known trucks. So we are changing lives of 10,000 drivers who, uh, who do this transit. A million trucks, 46% are actually monthly active users on our platform. Uh, our goal is to make each of them into a relay truck and grow this to, a, to 5 million trucks in the next 5 years. Thank you so much. The more you give, the more you get. I have experienced myself. I encourage all of you to experience to yourself. Today, a young boy who started working as a coolie in a remote village of Kerala, and for whom having a breakfast was a luxury, runs a company that serves world's best breakfast to million in Indians every single day. Let me summarize my messages for you. Build your business on solid ethics. Never compromise on it. Have open dialogue on your values and align your stakeholders. Focus on the spirit of the values, not on the term. Use common sense to solve world's problems and to build better businesses. Be the change you wish to see in this world. If you want people to trust you, you first trust them so that they will trust you back. And finally, money is never ours. We are just custodians of God's wealth. Do not hesitate to share it. Whatever is yours today, was somebody else's yesterday and will become somebody else's tomorrow. Let us work together to create this world a better place and to create heaven for others in this world. So you being ahead of somebody doesn't mean a damn thing. The question is only, the life that you are, is it finding full expression? That's an important thing. How is this related to my business? That's always the question. If uh, you think the person who is conducting the business, his quality and his state of being and his ability does not decide the quality of the business, then we know who you are. The most important step in this direction is, anything and everything that you do should become a conscious process, not a compulsive reaction to something that's happening around us, including your business. Only then, only then, you will unravel yourself. This is a fundamental transformation every human being has to bring in their life, otherwise you will not see great human beings. If you don't see great human beings, you will not see a great society or a nation. If you don't see great societies and nations, there is no great world and there is no great life. Well, people may be living in palaces, but <laughs> What's happening in their minds, if you look at it, it's absolutely disappointing. I have seen so many billionaire beggars, <laughs> yes? Because their attitude is still that of a beggar, the same insecurity, the same struggle. Ninety-nine percent of the humanity, unfortunately, they are an issue by themselves. In this condition, how to address the outside issues? This itself is an issue, it keeps you engaged. The possibility of enhancing one's life is very much there and it's not some wild philosophy or some esoteric something that you don't understand. A systematic scientific process is there that if one is willing to involve and pay enough attention and invest enough time and energy in this, enhancement of this life will happen. Isn't this life the most important thing to invest in? Once you are in some way enhanced, anyway your activity will enhance itself. So this is a possibility that every human being must explore.